to you. What is up guys? Dr. Pinesit here and it is clearly casual Friday. Uh, <laughs> today we're talking about lack of energy and lack of focus as a student. Is this you? Um, from working with thousands of students I can tell you it's one of the number one problems that students face is that they don't have the energy and they don't have the focus to execute in their studying and consequently never get the grades they want. So today we're going to talk about that, how you, why you have such low energy, why you have such problems focusing, and how you can boost both of those. So check it out y'all. Here we go. But stop making excuses, stop whining, stop, right? Get at it. No excuses, just dominate. All right, guys, good morning. Armand, Alexander, good morning. We are live action right now, and we're talking about energy and focus and what that means as a student for you guys, right? How many of you, Evans, whatever, it's been a long, long time. How many of you guys struggle with finding the energy and finding the focus to get your studying done and get it done the way you want to get it done, right? To get those grades. And for many of you guys, we're going to talk about and break down what those issues are. Um, for you guys who are first time joining me, I'm Dr. Andre Pineset. I'm the study doc, and I am here to help you guys be maximally productive, be successful, cut the stress out, and reach your goals. That's my objective. That's simple. And what brought up this video and this post uh, is something that one of my students posted actually on Instagram, Nicole too. So Nicole, um, my Bay Area native, uh, <laughs> she posted something that was great on her Instagram. And I was like, oh, I'll steal that. I'm going to steal that because I think that is really great. And it was a comment and it was a post. But beyond that, I keep getting emails from students telling me that you guys are struggling. Oh my gosh, Dr. Pines, I'm not motivated. Dr. Pines said, I'm just so burnt out. Dr. Pines, I just can't get through this quarter. I can't, just can't get through this week. I can't get through. So we're going to talk about how you get through. And it goes back to this quote that I saw on Instagram. I'm share with you guys right now. Credit to Nicole for finding this. Um, but it says, energy is currency. When you pay attention to something, you're buying an experience. It's an investment. So spend carefully and only on things that will bring you a good return. Be selective. Treat your time with as much care as your finances. It's equally as valuable. And I would actually argue that your time is more valuable than your finances because you can always replenish your bank of money. But one of the things, there's a great book, I forget the name of the book, but the, it was written by a physician who interviews people on their deathbed, right? So as they're in, in hospice care and as they're about to die and ask them what the great regrets are of their life, what their great shortcomings of their life are. And it's never the money part of it. It's always the experience part of it. And it's always that they chose to focus on things that were small. Oh man, that whole beef I had with my brother, I wish I would have just swallowed it and said, you know what? Let's, let's love each other. Let's be brother and sister. Let's be together and all those kind of things, right? So it's those little things. So I encourage you guys to have that foresight, to have that mindset, to understand that money seems like the most valuable thing. All the things, but your time is actually the most valuable thing. And the reason that it is, is the number one thing I want to talk about is that it is limited. A huge mistake that I see students make is they act like their energy and their focus and their attention is limitless. They're like in that Bradley Cooper movie, Limitless, where they feel like, oh, I can work 24 hours a day seven days a week. I don't need no sleep. Sleep is for the week. You know what? I can do this assignment, that assignment, this project, be in this club, do this thing, and I can just keep running. And a lot of you guys feel like, and what ends up happening is you feel like you're on a treadmill and you're running on 10. You're just running, sprinting full out. You're running. And that's your life. You never get to step off. You're always on the treadmill, scrapping for your life, literally scrapping to stay afoot, right? And if you guys know, when you get tired on the treadmill, it gives you a little extra jolt of energy because you feel like, oh man, if I get a little, if I if I step wrong, I step off the back of this thing, I'm gonna get mightily hurt, right? So you keep running. But how many of you guys feel like you're on a treadmill that's never ending and you're just exhausted? Some of you feel like you're invincible because you're young people. Oh man, I'm so young and all this energy, it's not sustainable. You can't live forever on Red Bull. You can't live forever on double shots. You can't live forever on that stuff. You guys have to recognize that your energy, that your focus is limited. And then by understanding it's limited, you have to then choose wisely where you allocate it. So many of you guys passively just give away your energy. Just give away your focus to things that you should not be concerned with. How many of you guys waste hours and hours and energy on social media 
And social media is not the bad guy. The bad guy is our inability to recognize the difference between being productive on social media and being wasteful on social media. You start out, I'm going to get a couple motivational things in. I'm going to get a couple wise words in. The next thing you know, you're down the rabbit hole. And like I've always say, you're watching crazy cat videos, right? You're watching day in the life videos as opposed to advancing your own life. So that way you're not so obsessed with living in someone else's life. You're obsessed with living your own. And this goes back to something I was talking about previously, like maybe a couple weeks ago. These study with me videos, these day in the life videos, it's great. I'm cool people do that. But what you don't understand is, is what is driving you to watch a day in the life video? What is driving you to watch a study with me video? It's because they're living the life you want. But if you're giving your focus and your energy and your attention to their life, where are you not able to allocate that energy and that focus and that attention? To your own life to make your life that life that you want. And I know it sounds crazy because you're like, man, I'm getting inspiration. I'm seeing this person who is where I want to be. But you guys got to recognize when you're focusing on their life and how great their life is, what is your life doing? What have you put in today to make yourself better and to progress your journey? Have you done your homework today? Have you done your reading? Have you looked at your schedule to plan out what you're going to do tomorrow to be successful? And so the very first thing I'll say, guys, is be conscious to actively dedicate where your time, your focus, and energy are going to go. And it starts with understanding social media and understanding how you're spending your time on social media. You're not just wasting it. And I saw something interesting the other day that says people now, TikTok, TikTok is getting big. People are spending over two hours a day on TikTok. Young people in the young age are spending over two hours a day on TikTok, which is crazy to me because TikTok has like, I think, 20 second videos. So how many videos are you consuming? And if you're consuming two hours worth of TikTok videos and they're each 20 seconds, how many of those can be quality videos? Or how many are just filler? Think about that. Right. So that's the first thing I'll say. The second thing when we talk about choosing wisely is the people that you put in your life, the people you put around you. And this happened actually recently. <laughs> and it, it always happens around the holiday time because I had a student who emailed me and was like, hey, Dr. Pine said, I'm really concerned because I want to stay and work on this research project over winter break. However, my family really wants me to come home because they haven't seen me since summer. I'm really conflicted because I know this is a great research opportunity that's going to set me up for the future, but my family and their feelings are going to be hurt and they're not going to understand. How can I explain me staying over winter break to my family? And it's interesting, guys, because our family is meant to be something that supports us, that lifts us up, right? That makes us feel good, makes us feel loved, makes us feel like we can jump over the moon. But so often that love is twisted in a way that they think that Unless we're close, unless they're holding on to us, unless, they're, unless we're there with them, unless we're talking to them every day on the phone, that we don't love them? And then what do you guys feel? Right? You feel the guilt. Right? Instead of being able to focus on your work, half your mind is thinking about how upset your parents are going to be that you're not answering their phone call. Right? I know that holidays are important to you guys. But we have to understand that, and this is something that I, I, like in my family, I'm not big at all on holidays. My wife loves holidays, loves to decorate, and I'm with it. But one thing we've come to agreement about is understanding that it's not how you act and what you do on a holiday that matters. What matters is what you do on the other 300 and some odd days of the year because that's the bulk of the time. Do you guys understand what I'm saying right now? So what you have to explain to your family as a student who's struggling with that is, listen, Guys, I love you. I talk to you all the time. I'm with you. I spent my first 18 years with you, but now I'm in college. And now it's time for me to focus on this so that way I can make you proud. I can make all the sacrifices you made worthwhile. All these things. And explaining to them that, listen, this is what I have to do in order to be successful and push forward my life. And don't you want success for me? And when you ask them in that way, what you'll see is that a lot of parents actually, that's all they want for you, <laughs> is you to be successful, is for you to be happy. But we feel so beholden to just give up that, that focus, that attention, to be able to pull it all over there, and it messes us up. So I encourage all of you guys to think about that and think about having a real-life discussion with your family if that's one of the things that are pulling you back. And to this student, what I told them was the story of another one of my students who was able to get a paid research position <laughs> and get a formal title position and get a publication in one year because they worked over winter break. 
and they chose, right? They elected. And it was amazing because they're a medical student. And in this medical school class, when you start medical school, once we start college, you're overwhelmed. So these medical schools to her first year are overwhelmed. And someone came to them and said, listen, we have this great opportunity for you to do research. Um, but you'll start it over winter break. We need a lot of data collected. Um, it's going to be very boring, but it's going to lead to something down the road. And what a lot of the students said was, listen, I'm, I'm so burnt out. I'm so tired. That's my time to go home. It's my time to relax. I'm not going to do it. And my students said, no, I'm going to get it. I'm going to jump on that opportunity, right? Because we take opportunities. And he went and did this winter opportunity where all he did was pull data. But then from that data, he actually got his name as an author on that publication. And then it launched him into a paid position starting that summer and going forward. So now you have two weeks of your life that now have given you funding for the next two to three years of your life and a great opportunity to advance your scholarly potential and your ability to get the residency you want. So does that make sense to everybody? So it's a tough thing, but we have to understand that where we spend our time and our attention and the people that we put in our lives matters big time. And the second group of people that we are often putting in front of ourselves that we have to evaluate whether people deserve our attention are our friends, your social circle, right? You are who you roll with those five people. And some of you guys have bad seeds in your life. Who can acknowledge this? Who can be truthful about this and say, yeah, you know what? You're right. Doxon, what's up? How many of you guys can be honest about that and say, you know what? There's some people in my life who I give them all my attention. I give them all my focus, but they're a drama queen or a drama king, right? They always got some stuff they're getting into. And it's, <laughs> it's actually funny. We were talking about this the other day <clears throat> with my wife because we watched as this guy got his buddy into a fight. And it was funny because you could tell the friend didn't want to fight, but now his buddy's in a fight, so now he's in a fight. And now you got a busted lip for what? Some of you guys got people in your life who don't consider you, who don't consider what you have going on, who don't consider your mental state, where you have to be, what you have to do that day, and all they're thinking about is them and themselves. And I know we live in a society where we have to be polite and we have to give them our attention, right? We have to be friends with them because they're our friend. But if you don't start respecting your own self and focusing on your own self, and you give them all your focus, then how can you advance yourself? And I say this, guys, because it's so important because it's one of the things, as a minority, I can say that brings down our minority communities is that we are too into the community. We are too into our people. We are too into helping others before we help ourselves. And the perfect analogy of this is on a plane, right? When you're on a plane and the students are giving that speech, right? And they're like, oh yeah, you know, your seatbelt, your belt buckle, oxygen may come down, even though the bag may not inflate, air is flowing. And what do they always say? They always say, put your mask on first and then your kid's mask. But too often, guys, we are so obsessed with pumping life into the lifeless people who are our friends, who are deadbeats, or our community who are not going to be successful that we miss out on our own success. Now we're all passed out with no oxygen on the plane. You know what I'm saying? Some of you guys, right, like Mike just said, energy vampires. You guys are letting people suck you dry of all your focus and all your energy. You got a friend who's always got a problem. She picks all the wrong guys and she always wants to complain to you about, about it to you. Oh man, I met this guy. And I'm gonna tell you this long drawn out story about his date. And of course, it's gonna end like every other date I've ever had in my life where the guy is a complete jerk. Oh my gosh, hug me, let me cry on you, let's... And you're like, man, like after that long conversation, do you really want to go do your work? <laughs> Is that really what you want to do? No. So you guys got to remember to push those people back and recognize you only have so much focus, so much attention, so much energy. And if you're giving drama and empty stuff attention, how can you get your own attention on? I don't know. And Sally's asking, Dr. People, there'll be an application boot camp 2020. Yes. If you guys don't know, I hold an annual medical school application boot camp, which is an affordable way for you guys to get support through your application process. If you guys also don't know, I offer a total pre-med transformation coaching program, which just launched this past week. It's been amazing so far. I'm very excited about it. But this is an opportunity for you to get all my pre-med classes and all my pre-med courses, and then also to get coached and mentored personally by me throughout your journey. So uh, check that out. Um, if you guys have a chance, my website, studenttransformation.com, check that out. Come hang out with us, be part of our group, and get better. So yes and yes to all those questions. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're talking about our attention to our friends, so we'll talk about that. The next thing is, is to things. How many of you guys, right, spend 
we have a thing, and I won't get too scientific, called cognitive load, which is the amount of things we have on our brain. And if you imagine your brain like a pie, and each thing that you think about takes a piece of that pie, some of you guys are giving away pieces of pie unnecessarily or unwittingly. So you're giving away pieces of pie to things that don't deserve pieces of your pie, which reduces the amount of brain power you have left to focus on the things that actually do matter. Some of you guys are worried about things that are outside of your control. Like someone came to me this week and you guys know that uh, Trump and Iran are getting into it, right? And someone came to me and was like, man, are you worried about Iran? I've been freaking out. I've been all over the news reading about what they got and the missiles here, what could happen and possible scenarios and whatever. And I'm like, actually, I don't know a whole lot about it other than Trump is fired off on them and then they fired some missiles over here. I don't know a whole lot about it. And I actually don't even engage in that. Why? Because I have real stuff to worry about today that I actually have control over. I have no control over whether Iran's going to go to war, whether Trump's going to go to war. I have no control. All I have control over is what I do today to secure my future. So instead of wasting a piece of my brain pie, I'm going to focus on what I got to do today. I'm going to focus on helping students. I'm going to focus on caring for patients. I'm going to focus on my family. I can't worry about Iran because that's not something I have control over. And for you guys as students, sometimes you guys are worried about things you don't have control over, things you can't change, things you can't determine. And you're so focused on those things that you miss out on controlling the things you actually can control. You guys are worried about, oh man, what am I doing on the MCAT? What am I doing on the MCAT? What am I doing on the MCAT? Well, the MCAT doesn't matter if your current grades are not quality. If you don't have a good GPA, what does it matter about the MCAT? What does it matter? I see so many students like, oh yeah, you know, my, my GPA is terrible, so I'm going to take the MCAT. And as I was saying in my TPT coaching this week, I'm like, it doesn't make any logical sense to think that if you have a 2.0 GPA, if you can't survive in your basic classes, how the heck are you going to get a 90th percentile MCAT score? It can't happen. So you're so worried about, oh, I'm going to make it up on the MCAT. How about you get yourself informed, build your fund of knowledge, build your study skills, so that way when the MCAT does come, you can be prepared and you can have an academic track record that supports that. This is one of the most heartbreaking things that, that ever happens to me is people come up to me and they say, listen, Dr. Pine said, I'm so, I want to be a doctor, it's so great to meet you, I have all these questions, and I'm like, whoa, 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 what's your GPA? And they tell me their GPA is like two point something. And I'm like, dang, what, what's going on? They're like, well, you know, I was focused on this, I was focused on this, I was focused on this. I'm like, man, you're focused on all these other things, getting a publication and all these things, but your grade point average is going to weed you out with the computers. So what does it matter if you did all those other things if your GPA is not quality? You're focusing on the wrong things, which made you drop the ball on the right things. We have to understand this, guys. What are you focusing on? And are you focusing on the thing that's going to determine your future? And there's a great book called The One Thing. I think it's Gary Kellerman. And he talks about what's the one thing I can do today or right now that makes everything else easier or even unnecessary. Too often you guys don't ask yourself that question. And instead you're doing a bunch of things to be active that don't actually push you forward. Meryl, what up? Does that make sense? One area that this came out with, I talked to my students who were in my study course, we talk about all the time, is that lecture. Lecture, lecture, lecture. One of the biggest strategies I can give you guys in terms of improving your grades and the efficiency with which you accomplish those grades is to stop attending lecture. Why? Because it is a crutch that leads you to believe the teacher's going to teach you everything. But one day you're going to get to a point where a teacher isn't going to be able to teach you everything, where the teacher isn't going to be quality, and then you're up, right? You're up that creek without a paddle. So what we have to do is be prepared for that day. Additionally, when we go to a lecture, is that the best use of our time? We only have so much energy, so much focus. So is lecture, spending four hours a day in lecture, is that the best use of our time and energy and our focus? I would argue it's not. But as part of that, some of you guys even recognize that lecture is not the best place for you, right? You recognize, man, I don't want to go to lecture. It's a waste of my time. Blah, blah, blah. But you go, and why do you go? Because of the clicker, right? The infamous clicker that was created <laughs> based 
on great research that said active learning is the best kind of learning. So we're going to make students engage by clicking in and responding to questions. The problem is, is it indirectly created a system where you guys prioritize those clicker points over your grades, over your learning. How many of you guys have gone to lecture just for the clicker points and you didn't take the time to do the math to recognize that all the clicker points in the world for the whole class are only worth 5% or 10% of your grade? But because you were going to class and getting clicker points, you weren't having the energy and the focus and the time you need to spend in the books to actually get the A. So you missed out on 30 or 40% of the class because you were trying to get 5 or 10% easy clicker points. Recognize. And this is often why you guys procrastinate. The same reason, right? Clicker points in our mind are easier, are less costly than test points homework points. So we want to get those free points. But are they really free? Because they cost you time, energy, focus. So they're not free. And I would argue they're extremely costly because you're spending your time in a place that is not the place that's going to result in you getting a better grade. This is very important. If you guys understand what I'm saying right now, let me know. Because this is very, very important. They have they were trying to do the right thing. The clickers, it was a great thing because it's like, man, this is going to people who are there be active. But then they said, listen, well, people aren't coming. They're not participating in clicking. we got to give points behind it. And it's one of those things, right? It becomes punitive as opposed to becoming productive. So you guys really have to think about that. Where you're spending your time for your classes. Even still, when you do choose to do the right thing and you're trying to study, how many of you guys allow your energy and your attention, your focus to be pulled away from your study by distractions? It's imperative that you guys understand willpower. Who understands what willpower is? Who wants to comment right now? Let me know. What do you think willpower is? What does it mean? How would you, just, how would you define willpower? How would you define willpower? Let's talk about it. How would you define willpower? This is super important. This is going to get to our point, right? What is willpower? I'm going to wait. We're here. We're live. What is willpower? While I wait for you guys to catch up, Extraordinary Money said, yep, that is how my biochemistry class is. What I do is compete, uh, complete and study the material for the whole week so that way I know the stuff for the test and the clickers. It's a win-win. I love that, right? What is willpower? This is so important. There we go. Eric is almost on it. Willpower is your own personal strength to accomplish a task. Jansen says it's self-control and discipline to get things done. DeAndre says it's being able to withstand any distractions. Right? Junior, being dedicated to a task. Chelsea says taking control. This is so important. You guys ready to hear this? The science shows that willpower, like anything, right? Willpower is our power to get things done, to stay focused, our personal strength. And if we think about physics and a force, right? A force applied to an object moves it in a direction. What is that requirement? Energy. So our willpower is a bank of energy we have to establish self-control and maintain control of ourselves and to tell ourselves, hey, I know you want to do this. I know this is more fun. I know this would feel better in the short term, but we're going to think about the long term. So instead of being, right, we're naturally pulled to the easy thing. We have to create a force, which is our willpower and an energy to pull ourselves away from that and into what we're supposed to be doing. Do you guys understand what I'm saying right now? Willpower is an active energy, right? It's an active reaction. We got to push things the other direction. It's an energy bank. So if you imagine you have a little sack here of willpower coins, every single time you put your willpower to the test, you use one of those coins. You're giving them away, giving away, give it away. And pretty soon what happens is, is you don't have any coins left, and therefore, what do you guys do? You procrastinate. 
And so what I encourage you guys to do, this is so important. If you guys want to have more energy, more focus for your academics, for your studying, it's important that you put in a system that allows you not to have to use your willpower because it facilitates, it puts you in a position to do the right thing. Do we understand what I'm saying right now? This is so important. To use the analogy of weight loss, what are some of the simple things you can do to promote weight loss? How about having your running shoes and your gym clothes right near your bed or in the trunk of your car so you can do it immediately after work? How about something as simple as getting the junk food out of your house? Did you guys know that moving your snack jar, right? So some, some of you guys keep a snack jar on your, on your desk or you keep nuts, whatever it is. Did you know that moving them out of arm's reach and moving them six feet away <laughs> makes you some astronomical, and I can't, I'm not going to cite the wrong number, makes you some huge percentage less likely. You're, it'll reduce your calorie consumption by some huge number. And I'm not going to cite the, the false number. But does that make sense to you guys? Just moving a simple jar out of your reach. So what if we approached studying the same way and we said, I want to put myself in a position where I'm not in arm's reach of distraction. My phone isn't right next to me. My phone is off and my phone is over there on the bed or my phone is in the other room. I left my phone at home because I'm going to the library and it's time to study, not be on social media, not take phone calls, not do those things. I'm going to set myself up for success. I'm going to create a study environment in a place that has limited distractions in such a way that has limited distractions and that facilitates focus. I'm not going to go to Starbucks and sit at Starbucks and every second the door is opening, someone's ordering this, I never heard that, that's a weird sound, and we're looking all over and we are actively distracting ourselves. We put ourselves in an environment that's not set up for us to succeed. And every single time we have to pull ourselves back from the gorgeous girl, the gorgeous hunky guy, right, who's got too many buttons undone, right? He's got even a deeper plunging v-neck than I got on right now. Every single time we pull our focus back, that's willpower being used. So instead of forcing ourselves to use brain power and willpower, which are all energies, to get ourselves back focused, back engaged, to reorganize ourselves in the material, what if from moment one, we set ourselves up to be organized, to be focused, to be in the zone to get the job done. How much better would your studying be if you didn't waste 25 to 50% of your willpower and of your brain power on distractions and on things in your study environment that don't need to be there? Think about this, guys. How many of you guys have to actively, sometimes you guys pull your phone out, you don't even realize you're pulling your phone out. And I'm guilty of this sometimes. I like to check email, check my sports, do the things. I just pull out my phone because like, I was just going on, pull out my phone. How many of you guys have to actively tell yourself, don't touch the phone? <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's be truthful. Please help people. Comment right now. Help people understand that they, you're not, they're not the only ones. They're not a weirdo. It's all of us. We struggle. We have to tell us, wait, 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 wait. Put, put my phone away. Oh, I'm studying and my phone just buzzed. I want to answer it so bad. Who could it be? It could be anything. What's the latest gossip? Oh my gosh. And we have to actively tell ourselves, don't do it. Don't do it. And it's like a burning itch. We have to scratch it. We got to we gotta see who's calling. Save yourself that trouble, guys, by setting up your study environment to be one in which your focus only has one place to go. Into the material. Into the book. And if you guys can do this, what's amazing is some of the stuff I mentioned today, it sounds very basic, very simple. But imagine, imagine if you recognized that your energy and your focus is not limitless. And instead of drinking all the coffee, drinking all the Red Bull, you instead, right, got some sleep. Imagine if instead of wasting your time on people and their wants and focus on your wants or focus on people and their drama instead of focus on what you got going on. And if instead of focusing on activities that weren't fruitful and weren't immediately pressing and weren't pushing you forward, you focused on the immediate things, the one thing that will make everything else unnecessary or, right, easier. What if you did those things? What if your study environment was set up so that you don't have to fight yourself? You don't have to feel that struggle, that pull into other things. And you could only be in the material. How much better of a student would you be? How much better? 
Think about that. How much better of a student would you be if you just did those things? Becoming a top student is not rocket science. People try to act like you got to take brain supplements. You got to do brain hack exercises. You got to become a speed reader. You don't have to do those things to be an elite student. What you do have to do is be dedicated. What you do have to do is be committed. What you do have to do is be focused. And what you do have to do is be an energized and engaged learner to actively learn and not be passive. And what is required to do that, guys, is a system that puts you in places to understand where there are opportunities where you're losing energy, where you're giving things away, where you're being inefficient, and to look for opportunities and ways to be more efficient, more productive. And I say all this to you guys to say, you all have the potential to be a great student. You all have it. But too many of you guys are giving away your potential because you don't actively think about your life, your energy, your focus, all the, your work, your potential. You don't think about it as limited. You don't think about it as timely. You think about it as like, oh, I can always make that back. I can always do that. No, 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 you can't. Today is the day we got to do it. So don't give away your potential, guys. Instead, focus on ways that you can streamline it and focus on like a laser to get to your potential, to maximize, to be your greatest. And if you guys need help with that process, if you want to become a more confident, more independent, more efficient student, then I encourage all of you guys to get with me, to get into my Five Pillars of Studying Lessons and Getting Better Grades course, and to get in my Total Student Transformation coaching program. And what's amazing is I say this, right? In everything I do, I'm always telling you guys, come to studenttransformation.com, come get in a course, come get in my community. And people sometimes, oh, I don't, I don't want that. I don't want that. I just want what he's talking about right here. I don't want anything more than this. This is it for me. And it was hilarious that I got an email. Actually, I'll read it. Do you guys care if I read the email? I got a message <laughs> earlier this week that made me actually laugh. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find it now. You guys will wait for a second, right? <laughs> of course I can't find it right now. I'll read it another time. I'll post it on my social media. But the student's email was so funny. <clears throat> they were leaving uh, an email to let me know how much they loved my Five Pillars course. And what they were saying was, is, man, Dr. Pine said, I'm so thankful I found you but I'm so mad at myself for not signing up earlier. I was one of those students who would see your social media, would be motivated by your videos and say, man, this is great motivation. I would be educated by some things you would say and I would be great, like, oh my gosh, I got so much wisdom and I feel so smart and all these things. And I would tell myself, that's enough. And the moment you started saying, hey, listen, get to my website, I would tune out. I would turn it off, I'd say, oh my gosh, run for the hills, he's trying to sell me something. I finally got in your TST last quarter and because of that, I'm a straight A student. And I say this to say, I know when I tell you guys, when I say student, get to studenttransformation.com, get to a course, you guys are like, man, no, 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 no. Free is good enough for me. But I want you guys to recognize you're here because you're not as successful as you want to be. And when I tell you get to my website and get to a course and get some coaching and get the full Monty, get everything, I'm telling you this because I understand as someone who's gone from being a disadvantaged student to being the ultimate advantage, to being the dominator I am, to being an anesthesiologist, to being a learning expert, to being someone who tra travels and gets to speak and empower students, I didn't get there by being superficial. I didn't get there by hanging out on the surface. I didn't get there by nickel and diming and getting a tip here and getting a strategy here. I got there by diving deep, right? And replenishing myself in the waters of Mount Minnetonka by really going in. And so I encourage you guys, take the time, get on our website, just see what's there. Get to studentchampions.com and just see if you're like, man, I really like what he said here. So I imagine if I listened to him for 30 minutes and I felt better, how would I feel after 30 hours with him? Probably pretty good. So I encourage you guys to get over there and right now, for the next 24 hours, I'm running a flash sale 
on my Five Pillars course and my TST student coaching, 50% off, guys. You can get in right now. The link is in the profile or the bio or the whatever, the description below. Check it out, guys. It's going to make you a better student. If you want to be more energized, more joyful, my students love studying. My students love testing because they have a system that facilitates, takes all this need for willpower away because we're focused. It takes all this hustle and bustle and scrustle and cramming all away because we're ahead. We're front loaded. So I encourage you guys to check that out. And as always, listen me, listen in, listen here, hear me now, hear me now, hear me now, hear me now. You guys all can be great. You guys all can dominate. But not all of you will. Make a conscious decision today to decide what you're going to do to push yourself forward. Do we understand what I'm saying right now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lake Minnetonka. <laughs> I encourage all of you guys, recognize you can be great. Go get your greatness today. You can be the greatness today. <laughs> so do that. And Armand, email me. Everyone, have a wonderful day. Have a productive weekend. Go get your future, guys. Thank you, guys. Later. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses. No more complaining. You're going to take your future in your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. Get to my website, studenttransformation.com. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better?